Do you like Lamborghinis? Yeah. Very yeah, cool. You can sit in it. It's so, so cool. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do that. Whoa! I got a perfect. <laughs> You're so cool. Yeah. I love it. How old are you? I'm five. You're five? Well high five. Boom. You are awesome. I got a little girl that loves cars too. That's so cool. <laughs> you want me to rev it? Make it make sounds? You need to get it. Yeah. I'll rev it for you. Because it's nice and warm, so it should make some sounds. All right, let's see. <laughs> Are you ready? All right, here we go. <laughs> it's cool, right? <laughs> oh, you're great, dude. Well, what's your name? My name is Keon. Keon? Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. Awesome, so absolutely. Car. Work hard and get one earlier than it took me to get one. Yeah. <laughs> this one. I will. Yeah, don't, don't go too fast because the police will. Oh, yeah, they will. You're right. Uh, you're awesome. Thanks for the smile. Thanks for the laugh. Take care. All right, bye. And welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome back to another new video. And today, we're going to talk about the chaos taking place in the dealerships, the Dodge dealerships, because we already know that it's been nothing but chaos after Dodge announced their their EV Daytona chargers just, what, earlier this week, that everyone, I mean, the vast majority of people are going, this is not for me. I don't want this EV thing. And what's really sad is the one shining, maybe possible light that we can look to would be the twin turbo six cylinder in that six pack, but that's not even coming out till 2025, meaning that all the dealers have to look forward to selling is this EV thing, and they can't even move their Hornets, they can't move those RT Hornets, those plug-in hybrids, they can't move any of these things. They're having inventory piling up like you wouldn't believe. And what's really crazy is, I talked to one dealer today who says, look, I have I have like a red eyes, I have uh, well, a red eye, I have some special edition cars and they aren't moving make me an offer brad make me an offer and i'll sell you one i mean that's the market for the cars that are the most desirable cars the v8 hemi cars are having trouble moving and we all know this we've watched all the videos it's proliferating inter the internet it's everywhere articles videos in youtube and instagram talking about the oversupply of inventory it's not just sxts and gts and rts it is scat packs and hellcats that are sitting there not moving. In some cases, because the prices are too high. In some cases, just nobody's buying them. The rates are too high and the cars are too expensive. It's all about these ridiculous prices. So if they're having trouble selling the most desirable cars and now they're going to get delivered these EV things, what we know how we all feel about this. We know how the vast majority of us, there's always going to be one of you that, that comments. You, you take your soy latte, you set it down, and you start typing, this is progress, you're just afraid of progress, you're just old, you're just this, you're, I've heard it all. It has nothing to do with that. There's a, such a bigger picture and so much more evidence surrounding that EVs are not the answer, are not the path, are not the way. So understanding that that's where I'm coming from. I like to analyze things, dig deep in, and really try and understand. And the idea of sitting for 30 minutes or more at any charger at any point in my life is something I, I would rather go to the dentist than do that. It's just not going to happen. Range anxiety, all the things we've talked about in other videos. So knowing that now Dodge is coming out with something that's got crappy range, really, they announced these things with really crappy range, but Brad, you know, if they can get over 300 miles in optimal conditions. So they're rolling out their EVs at Dodge with crappy range. And you're going to see this more and more throughout this year with other stuff. All these other EVs they're saying they're bringing out that they're launching these cars with really crappy range. And crappy range in comparison to the competitors, many of the competitors. And what's what would be the shiny, like the... The, the possibility of survival would be if they're rolling out the first super cheap EV, the first EVs to to break under $30,000 with reasonable options. If they were coming out with something like that and they called it the crazy idea, I know, let's say it's an SXT with 
a single motor and it's whatever it is. They come out with that. They would probably, and it was really cheap. They would sell so many of those things that they would be able to not have to buy carbon credits, which according to Butter, I, I love this, he, he looked this stuff up, that Carlos Tavari said they will not allow Dodge to do. They wouldn't have to do that if they sold enough EVs like Ford did with the Mach-E, even though the Mach-E is horrible. They sold the hell out of that thing, making room to be able to continue to offer the V8s everything else. So if they, if they just kept the EV to an SXT and a GT model, not tried to go with electric muscle, which is really, really stupid, they could have sold enough of those cars for so cheap because nobody wants a Hornet because the Hornet's an Alfa Romeo and the Hornet's a hybrid. The Hornet is not something that's going to offset their EV credits enough or give them the EV credits enough to be able to go and build the V8s. But if they came out with a GT or a SXT, all electric version, charger, two door and four door, and that car got 400 miles in range and had minimal power, enough to be able to get on the freeway. I mean, it doesn't need to have 300, 296 horsepower. That'd be an interesting number, right? Be an interesting number. And didn't make it as, as freaking heavy, which they wouldn't have to do because they probably wouldn't need as big of batteries. But let's say that it was heavier and they got it to 350 horsepower. That would sell if they kept the price down, even if it was under 40,000, 35 to 40,000 dollars. They would sell so many of those things. Even if they lost money on those things, they could build the other cars, the fun cars, the V8 cars, the engines, the, the ICE cars, and make tons and tons of profit, which they've proven in the past. But instead they decided they're gonna go and they're gonna build, they're gonna try to replace the Hemi muscle car with a electric thing with crappy range, horrible top speed, mediocre zero to 60 in quarter mile times, and that weighs almost 6,000 pounds. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. So with all that being said, what are the dealers thinking? Well, I went ahead and reached out to some of them. I even got an email from one, and here's what he says. And he said I could share this with you all. I'm not gonna share his name, but he says, I quit Mack Hike Flowwood CDJR today. Remember that dealership with the soldier and all the drama and all the chaos and the craziness? Well, this is interesting. It has nothing to do with management or the company but 100% because of the future of Stellantis vehicles. Last year I was number two in units and number one in CSI scores. I'm assuming that's customer service ratings. He says, feel free to use that in a video if you want. Imagine you're a salesperson who's been able to sell one of the coolest cars in history, the Dodge Challengers and Chargers with the Hemis in them. And all you had to do is get people on the lot, get them through the financing hurdles, and they would take these cars. They would take these cars at over sticker. They were paying markups. These cars sold themselves. They were so freaking cool. They couldn't keep them on the lots until the dealers screwed with people so badly that we all decided, I don't even want to buy it anymore. It's not even worth it. Yeah, I love them, but if I have to go to a Dodge dealership, I don't want anything to do with them, so I'm not going to buy it. So before we all got sick and tired of it, before prices continued to increase, before interest rates went up, this guy's able to sell the hell out of these cars good salesman, sounds like he did a good job with his customers, with those scores. So now he's faced with, okay, they're coming out with some new stuff. Thank goodness, maybe we'll be able to sell them. And they come out with the EV models and don't come out with the gas models. So the six cylinders aren't gonna be, aren't gonna be out till 2025. That means they've gotta go this entire rest of this year selling this EV crap. So then I took some time and I, called a few other car salesmen that I know that work for Dodge and I asked them, so what do you guys think? What's happening in the dealership right now? What's the overall vibe that's taking place? And I was shared, this was shared with me by several different Dodge salespeople, with different dealers who said, we're dying here. We're dying here. We can't sell the stuff we got. Salespeople are dropping like flies. They're leaving like crazy to other dealerships, other brands where they can actually sell stuff, where they have cars that are still in demand. They're not excited about this EV thing. They don't know who the hell they're gonna sell them to because they're not coming out with great stats or ratings that would make us think that we have anything we could sell. So we can't say, hey, come buy this Dodge Charger because it's got more range than a Tesla Model 3. It's better zero to 60, it's better than a quarter mile, it's got a better top speed, it's lighter, it's cooler, it looks better. No, instead, it looks decent, 
I know a lot of people disagree with me. It's heavier, it's slower, it's got worse range. So they're they're telling me, Brad, here's my issue. I don't know what to do this year, but other than if I have enough inventory of the existing Hemi stuff, I you know we can at least put those on sale. We can bring some rebates out. Maybe they'll help us with some incentives. We can negotiate the prices down. At least we can pull the trigger on those cars. If rates get a little bit better, we know that people will come back and buy those cars if we stop playing games with them. But these electric things, they're telling me they don't know what the hell they're going to do or who the hell they're going to sell them to. And they're worried that they're going to start showing up the dealerships in summer and they're not going to be able to sell them or give them away. And that's going to be a catastrophic problem for all of these dealerships. And especially for these salespeople who who, well, we beat them up pretty bad. They depend on having inventory to sell, inventory that people want, and now they're being given this garbage. So that leads to my next point I wanted to make in this video is the first thing that if I was one of these salespeople that maybe have, I don't know, maybe borderline unscrupulous behaviors and maybe a blurry relationship with ethics and integrity, the first thing I would think is, well, since now they're not giving us any crap to sell, that anybody's gonna to wanna to buy, let's raise the prices on all of our Mopar stuff and SXTs, everything, let's hold firm on that because we're gonna need that inventory to last throughout the year to be able to sell that stuff. That would be logical, but my next question to several of these salespeople were, well, now that all you're gonna get is EVs, does that mean you're gonna start jacking the prices up again and getting stupid with the Mopar, the, I'm sorry, with the Hemi cars and start going back to stupid markups and playing all these games. And you know what he said to me? One of them said to me, he said, uh, no, I want, I need to sell anything I can make me an offer. We want to get rid of these cars. We need to move stuff. It's there's, we're not, no, we're not even close to going back to that, that world. He says, even though some of our stuff is listed at certain prices on the website, come make me an offer. Come make me an offer right now. More than ever, we want to move some cars. We need to start getting some revenue. We need to start getting these things moving. Our lots are full. If you want a Hornet, come on in there, bring some Monopoly money and some granola bars and a pack of bubble gum and they might knock $10,000 off. I'm kidding, but that's how ridiculous it is. They would do anything to move those cars. So if you want to get an SXT or a GT, make your deal. Tell them what you're willing to pay. And what I'm hearing is they're willing to do anything. I was expecting this big surge in pricing, this big, big, huge game playing bullshit BS to start up again with them saying, well, since you're not going to get a gas engine until 2025, we're going to hoard these V8s even longer and hold those prices up even higher. The problem is demand is so bad right now that you're going to be able to still get those cars for great deals. So I'm here to tell you all to just wait wait them out, wait these Hemis out, wait the Hellcats out. One of the dealers said, I had a red eye, come on down, make me an offer. We'll, even though it's the last one and it's a pretty awesome car, we'll make you a deal. Come down, make us an offer within reason because that's still like the highest spec car that they've got and they know that somebody's gonna wanna buy it. But make us a good offer, a fair offer, and we'll take that car We'll or, and we'll sell that car. So very different tune I'm getting from every salesperson I've talked to. And for that reason, I will tell you all, you need to just wait and keep being patient because I'll tell you right now, they can't sell anything. When special editions, super Bs are going below MSRP, Mopar editions going at or below MSRP. These are great cars. They're just overpriced at nearly $70,000 for scat packs. So there is an opportunity to go out there and start hashing some deals. I get messages every single week from subscribers who are out there getting special edition cars for incredibly low prices under MSRP rebates and they're not sticking up with add-ons or anything else. The dealers really want you to stick with their financing because they're trying to squeeze every penny they can. It's like the, the last breath of a dying man. He's just he's wanting to, 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 you, to, to get as, as much as he can out of it. But I'll tell you, it's, it's gone. The market's gone. The market's not there. And that means we are in charge at this point. Now there'll be salesmen, there'll be car dealers that are gonna comment and they're gonna say the horrible things they like to say. But I'll tell you, the reality is the reality. The fact is the fact. The bottom line is that what they're getting, they're getting in the summertime is gonna be an unwanted thing. It's gonna be till 2025 before we get to see that twin turbo six cylinder hurricane with 550 horsepower in the high output, which I believe will be, I think a great car. 
They should have, not sure if they're going to or they did, but they should have given that a cooler name than six pack. They should call that something better, I just think. But outside of what they call it, it should be a pretty great car. It should be a pretty fun car. But waiting till 2025 means that a lot of us, we're just gonna keep going further away from Dodge. So for that reason, hang tight. You will get your Hemis, you will get them for good prices. And no, there's nothing that's coming in a few months, which I did mention in other videos, that might force the prices down on these, these Hemi cars. It's just the market and the interest rate, and frankly, the demand. So you're still gonna get deals, even though they're not coming out with anything, and the only thing they got left to sell that anybody really wants is the leftovers from last year, and you're still gonna get that deal. But you gotta negotiate strong. You gotta stay strong, you gotta play hardball with them. You gotta walk out of that dealership two or three times sometimes. You gotta call many dealerships, but you will get your deal. So that's what's going on out there, folks. Salesmen quitting, dealers scrambling. Uh, they've been on calls with Chrysler all day, I believe today and yesterday, and the things that I'm hearing coming out of these calls are just, underwhelming no excitement nothing to look forward to at this point it's the strongest salespeople will, su will survive in selling whatever the hell they can i do think this is going to help our used car values so i'll end with that i think our used car values if they have nothing to sell that anybody wants the best way they can make some money is to start going back to buying the used cars meaning our used hemis our chest our scat packs our hellcats our rts and any of those with low mileage still under warranty you might get some decent money out of those at least some fair money it's not going to be ridiculous like going back to covid times but they might be in a little bit more demand so you're sitting on i think a very stable stable price on your used cars as long as you didn't significantly overpay or pay any markups before that's just my thought. You're still going to lose some money, just not as much. Because the only thing they're going to have to sell is used cars. But watch what happens when these EVs come out. And, I mean, whoever buys one, people are going to pull alongside them and just start laughing. You're driving a 6,000-pound car with a fake exhaust pipe on it. This is this is just horrible. This is that, that won't even go past 134 or 137 miles an hour. And as a mediocre 0 to 60. And I, it's just it's too bad. It's too bad. They should have launched first with the ice cars they should have launched first with that six cylinder sold the daylights out of and then came out with the evs afterwards but their thought is they're going to sell these evs and that's going to suddenly make everything good no should have done sxts should have should have done gts and appealed to that the lower price range market the basic commuter market much better range they would have sold those things they would have sold them because it's a nicer looking car than a lot of the other ridiculous looking EVs out there, like that Hyundai Ionic thing for $50,000. They could have easily forty to $50,000 for that thing. They could have easily beat the daylights out of Hyundai. It's like they don't realize they have competition. They think they're the only ones out there. How are they not researching? It's Anyways, I gotta stop. I gotta end this video before my head explodes. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share this with anybody you think it could benefit. Sit tight, everybody. Stay strong. Deals are coming. Talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.